Hey guys, hope everyone's having a great day. Thanks for joining me today. I want to talk about Ozzy Osbourne. Um, my very first album I ever purchased was The Ozman Cometh, which was a greatest hits album released in 97. They cataloged everything from Blizzard of Oz up through Osmosis, and it had an original track called uh, Back on Earth, which is a super solid song. Um, I was familiar with Ozzy's work from the radio, you know, listening to K-Bear or Rock 99 or whatever the, whatever it was at that time. I was very familiar with Ozzy's uh, solo work. And, uh, you know, the fact that he was kind of portrayed as the Prince of Darkness and this evil guy made it a little bit more, I don't know, mysterious, enticing a little bit. Uh, anytime I'd hear Ozzy's songs, I really thought he had a cool voice. It, it really stuck out in, in comparison or contrast, really to any of the other classic rock singers. Um, he was uh, he was kind of ousted, left Black Sabbath, I think it was in 79. And uh, he ventured on his own, and to uh, the world's great amazement, he was incredibly successful as a solo artist. That doesn't always happen. When a frontman or a lead guitar player leaves a band, for them to be able to really cash in and be as successful as as he was with his original band, or even more successful as a solo artist, it doesn't happen all that often. So it's pretty incredible when you look at Ozzy's body of work, both with Black Sabbath and as a solo artist, what he's been able to accomplish. Now, he's an incredible singer, uh, lyricist, wrote a lot of really good songs, but he owes a lot of his success, specifically in the solo career, to the people that he was teamed up with. I wouldn't call it luck. I would say he was very fortunate to find some of the players that he had. Uh, his first lead guitar player was Randy Rhodes. Um, Randy Rhodes played in a band called Quiet Riot. It was really popular in the 80s. In fact, I think they were like one of the first heavy metal bands to have a number one. And if I remembered, it, it was just the cover of Slade's Come On, Feel the Noise. But anyway, he was wasted in that band. Uh, I like some Quiet Riot songs, but anybody in the L.A. scene could play those songs. Uh, but Randy Rose was able to come into this and really express himself and lift the music and take that band places. Um, he was only around for a short time. He died in 82, which is really, really sad. Um, but he left a lot of fantastic songs on the table, some majorly iconic riffs. In fact, the most iconic riff in Aussie history, right? It goes like this. <laughs> Super solid. You recognize it instantly. You know what it is. That's all Randy Rhodes. After Randy Rhodes uh, was gone, uh, Ozzy formally got Jakey e. Lee, who was kind of an unknown guitar player at the time. And he recorded a couple albums, some really standout tracks. would be Bark at the Moon um, and Shot in the Dark. Those are a couple of my favorites. Uh, I was the biggest fan when I was younger of the Zach Wilde era, and I think that's because I, it was kind of contemporary with me. Ozzy was still recording new music and writing songs with Zach Wilde, and I really, really liked Zach's guitar playing. Um, it's very basic playing. It's just on steroids. He really relies on the pentatonic scale, and he just rips the pentatonic scale like nobody's business uh, with his trademark squeals which are all over Ozzy's music. Um, it's called, it's a pinch harmonic. It's a specific way, where's the camera, where you, you pick the note, then you follow through with your thumb and stop the vibration and it squeals. So that was a signature trait from Zach Wilde. Uh, it was all over his music, kind of uh, made, a, made a name for himself that way as a guitar player. But I've always been an Aussie fan. From that very first album, I've loved his tunes. Uh, I've seen him live. Unfortunately, it was when he was quite a bit older, and his voice was was really struggling. He really struggles these days. But the fact that he's still alive and still kicking and still going is is pretty admirable. I wish I would have had a chance to see him in his prime. You know, like early '90s, late '80s. That would have been really, really cool. So yeah, the, the song I want to play today is actually from one of his, I would call it later releases. It's not really that late. It's probably mid-career at this point. But in 1994, 1995, he released the Osmosis album. And that was one my older brother had. That was a, an album that Brad had. And uh, I loved it. I think that CD is super underrated. It's got some incredibly heavy songs. And the opening track is one of my favorite Aussie songs 
ever. And it's a ridiculous song. It's about Perry Mason. It's called Perry Mason. But it's so heavy, uh, the main riff in that song. It just oh, it gives me goosebumps still. Uh, I remember coming downstairs into Brad's room and, and him playing that and just being blown away at that song. Um, Ozzy's vocal performance was solid, and it is monstrously heavy. So uh, I've got a link to it down below. Go listen to it. I love Ozzy. Fantastic music. Here it is, Perry Mason. Super cool. Go give it a listen. <laughs> 